Scott Holiday here, and a lot of people have been sending me this image. This is the promotional picture that was sent out for Collision. Now, I will admit that I'm recording this before AEW Dynamite this week, so I don't know exactly what Tony Khan's going to say about this image and what the plan is going forward, but a lot of people are saying, hey, look how wrong I am about my video, which I tried to split up the brands because it looks like all the champions are here and it appears that the champions are going to float between brands. Now there is reports that they are going to have a hard brand split. This isn't going to be a soft brand split. We are splitting up the roster for some are going to Dynamite, some are going Collision. If the champions float, I still think it's a bad idea. I just want to voice this one more time that if the champion floats, and the whole point of this brand split is to keep certain individuals apart, like CM Punk and the Elite, I think that means that they cannot win championships, because then they'd have to appear on the other show. Now, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, because I also understand that both rosters will appear at pay-per-views, so maybe they'll be able to put things aside so that they can work together at pay-per-views, just not week to week, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If the whole point is we got to keep them separated, why is it okay to do it once a month or once every three months? I just think that this is a mistake if the whole idea is to keep people apart because it's telegraphing when someone can win and when someone cannot win. Uh, I also want to point out that... Uh, the dirt sheets have been saying that Collision will be the home of the JAS, so I'm baffled to see Andrade on this. I really thought they were trying to keep Sammy and Andrade apart. I thought Andrade was gone, to be honest, so that was a face I was very surprised to see. In any case, let's get on with today's video and let's plug in. It's very Saturday, May 20th at Hava de Grace's State Theater. It is CZW's Best of the Best, where we will crown a brand new CZW World Heavyweight Champion. Now, the rest of the video is about that, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it here, but I do want to talk to you about some non-tournament action, as we will see a staple of CZW, the rep, take on the American Hammer, Matt Quay, and E.N. Bush in tag team action. We also have a huge 10 competitor tag team match. We will see the team of post game, the standout athlete Vinny Talata and Miami Mike Walker team with Brando Lee, Chris Bishop, and Ruthless Lala to take on Milk Chocolate, the most succulent tag team in all of CZW. That is, of course, Brandon Watts and Randy Summers. Teaming with Richard King, J.C. Storm, and Troy Parker. So you don't want to miss this one. I'm going to talk about it a lot in a moment. So join us for CZW's Best of the Best in Hava de Grace, Maryland. The bell rings at 7. The doors open at 6. And you can watch it on the Premier Network. We have a special announcement about High Tension Wrestling's Enchantment Under the Sea. And it's not coming from the president of wrestling, Phil Stanford. It's not coming from King Crab himself. No, this message comes from me, Scott Holliday. Take a look at this. Good morning, wrestling fans. I'm Scott Holliday. I come here today with a very special invitation. Now, the high-tension wrestling fans know that Enchantment Under the Sea is coming up when a few short weeks. And those with dates are quickly making hair appointments, making signs, and finding tuxedos, dresses, or Edith Surreal t-shirts, buying tickets, and so on. However, I've noticed that those without dates have resigned themselves to the fact that they won't be attending the Enchantment Under the Sea. This troubles me. Now, King Crab's Enchantment Under the Sea is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Well, twice-in-a-lifetime opportunity if it draws well. And that shouldn't be passed up. And those that miss this opportunity will be forever left wondering, what if? But today, I'm here to tell you to live without regrets, especially you Sassy Boatwright fans. Just because you don't have a date 
shouldn't prevent you from going to this milestone of your life. For those who feel uncomfortable going alone, I invite you to come with me. I'm getting a group of friends together to go as just that. Friends! I offer a variety of tag partners and to enjoy the evening without emotional commitment. It will be a fun-filled night full of friendship and wrestling. Now, whether it's with me or somebody else or a group of friends or just by yourself, I urge you to attend today. Just introduce yourself to me. Even if I don't know you, it's a great way to meet new people. And, you know, I'd be honored to meet you myself. And even if we collect enough money, the money that we save on corsages and boutonnieres could be spent on streamers for us to throw in the ring. It'll be a great night, I promise you. Allow me in conclusion to urge you to go to King Crab's Enchantment Under the Sea one final time and to end on this note. Will you go to prom with me? Thanks for that, Scott. Great stuff. Yes, it is King Crab's Enchantment Under the Sea presented by High Tension Wrestling. Check it out Saturday, June 10th at the Riverside Beneficial. That is 1742 Pear Street in Reading, Pennsylvania. Be sure to join us. The doors open at 3 o'clock. The bell rings at 4. And this is going to be a magical evening of prom goodness at Enchantment Under the Sea. And each week, I've had a little, little bit of insight of who you're going to see at Enchantment Under the Sea. Not this week, though. Here's who you're not going to see. High Tension Wrestling fans, I'm so excited to announce Enchantment Under the Sea, June 10th, coming to Reading, Pennsylvania. That's right, our very own wrestling prom. However, at our last event, Ethan Wilde attacked the owner of one of our sponsors, Vinny's Barbershop. Ethan Wilde is now banned from attending Enchantment Under the Sea due to his actions, and we look forward to having an enriching partnership with Vinny's Barbershop as we move into the future. But fans, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you all at prom, Enchantment Under the Sea, on June 10th. I'm not sure if you checked out this video as I take a look at CPW Cosplay Pro Wrestling. And if you enjoyed that video, I got good news for you. Because Cosplay Pro Wrestling is coming to a convention near you. If you live in New Jersey or Pennsylvania area. Because on June 17th, Cosplay Pro Wrestling rolls into Anime Next at the New Jersey Convention and Expo Center in Edison, New Jersey. Check that out at AnimeNext.org. Then, the very next weekend, June 23rd through the 25th, there are two shows at Too Many Games. Yes, at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Oaks, PA, CPW brings two exciting cosplay pro wrestling shows to the wonderful folks at Too Many Games. Check that out at TooManyGames.com. So today on the Soapbox, we are just days away when this is uploaded from CZW's Best of the Best, a tournament to crown a brand new CZW champion. And I'm going to break it down for you. This is Best of the Best Bracketology. So the way this is going to work is we start with 12 people in the first round. They will compete in four separate three-way dances. These matches will be elimination, which means there's no sneaking a pin and stealing a victory and finding yourself in the semifinals. No, everyone has to be eliminated. So that also means you won't see someone not make it to the finals and never get pinned. So I'm happy to see this. Plus, we got Deshaun Pratt, 
who has a first round bye. We don't know where he's going to work into in this tournament, but we do know we'll be seeing him in the second round. So let's break down each one of these matches. First up, we have Miles Hawkins versus Kid Bandit versus Mr. All Night Long, Rich Swan. All night long, all night, yeah. Oh, not long. I love Rich Swan. Rich Swan has been making a name for himself all over the world. He's worked for so many companies, and now here he is in CZW, and he doesn't have the best record. Since I've been working at CZW, Rich Swan is two and six. So Rich Swan was able to make his way into this tournament by defeating Troy Parker in a hard-fought matchup. But, I don't know, Rich Swan has been a bit out of his groove as of late and has not been making the impact that he usually makes here in the combat zone. I don't know if we'll be seeing him making it all the way to that championship. He's also joined by Miles Hawkins. Miles Hawkins is very interesting in that Miles Hawkins believes that he is, in fact, perfection. There are no mistakes when it comes to Miles Hawkins, and he thinks he's going to make it all the way to that championship. And the last thing he wants to be considered is an underdog in this tournament. I see Miles Hawkins as a bit of an underdog in this tournament. He's still fresh to the eyes of the CZW faithful. He has not made that big impact here. But, man, he'd make a splash if he could make it into the second round. But I'm not sure if I see it. And that brings me to Kid Bandit. And Kid Bandit had this to say. Dear Diary, I can't believe it's finally happening. I'm gonna be at the 2023 Best of the Best Tournament to crown a new CZW World Champion. And oh my gosh, the names they announced for this tournament, it's such a stacked and star-studded roster. Now, they just announced the first round matchups. I'm in the triple threat against Miles Hawkins and Rich Swan. And oh my gosh, I am so hyped. Rich Swan is an incredible talent and I'm looking forward to proving that I can not just hang with the best, I can beat the best. And I guess Miles is also an incredible talent and his potential is through the roof. But he's also kind of a big jerk. He's arrogant and he's cocky and he's been running around roughshod across CZW like it's his own playground and I won't stand for it. So I hope I get an opportunity to shut him up and put him in his place. Anyway, there's a lot of names in this tournament I'd love to face and I'm gonna go write all of them down in my notebook so they know that I'm coming for them. Anyway, I have to go. I'll sign my name off, but that won't do me any favors here in this notebook. So, hopefully the next time you see my name, it will be in the history books as the winner of the 2023 Best of the Best Tournament. Kid Bandit was invited to take part in this tournament, and I feel like Kid Bandit is right about to break through that ceiling. I feel like Kid Bandit has been under the surface for a while now, and is ready to bubble over. I think this could be quite the coming out party for Kid Bandit, because I know Kid Bandit is quite hungry for it. And I'm going to pick for this match Kid Bandit to be moving on to the semifinals. Next, in the first round, we have the top guy, Griffin McCoy, taking on Myron Reed and cash flow, Ken Broadway. Now, Griffin McCoy, at an afternoon of main events, took on Aaron Ash in a brutal 
Texas strap match. They were trying to rip the flesh off each other's bones. And Griffin McCoy came out on top, making Aaron Ash taste defeat for the first time in a long time by choking him out with that leather strap. But the wounds of war are still fresh across the body of Griffin McCoy. How is that going to affect this matchup when he goes in there with two greats. Myron Reed is bringing in that hot fire into this match. If you don't know Myron Reed, he wrestles like a guy that doesn't care about the well-being of his own body. He will throw his body off of anything and in to anyone to cause damage. He's had some fantastic matches against the likes of Leo Rush, Teddy Hart, Laredo Kid, it's phenomenal the career that this man has racked up in just a few short years in the business. And then you got Ken Broadway. And I had a few people ask me about Ken Broadway because they didn't think they had seen him before. Well, if you're asking me that question, that means you haven't seen him before. Because it only takes one time seeing Ken Broadway, to have him burned into your mind. The moment you see him, the athleticism, the charisma that exists inside Ken Broadway is astounding. I remember when I first saw Ken Broadway back at Chikara's Young Lion Cup 12 back in 2016. And even then I was like, there's something about this guy. And since then, he's become quite the athlete picking up victories over the likes of Leo Rush. And now he wants to become the crown jewel here at CZW. So who am I going to pick? Am I going to pick the astounding 10-year veteran, Ken Broadway? Or am I going to pick the high-flying athleticism of Myron Reed? You know, there's lots of reasons to pick both of those competitors, but... But every time I look at my watch, it says the same thing. And that's that it's top guy time. I have to go with Griffin McCoy for this one. Griffin works harder than anyone I've ever seen. After every defeat, he tears his body down and rebuilds himself as a better Griffin McCoy. After every victory... He still takes time to learn lessons from the mistakes he made, even when he wins. Every time I've seen Griffin McCoy, it's been the best Griffin McCoy I've ever seen. And he's going to bring that to best of the best. Next in the first round, we have O'Shea Edwards taking on Alex Kane and the ruler, Aaron Ash. This is quite the big man battle, and that plays into the hands of O'Shea Edwards, the big bad kaiju who wants death to the fake heavyweights. So he wants these two heavyweights to prove to them that they earn that moniker. O'Shea Edwards is a dangerous man, and I'll let him explain this in his own words. CZW best of the best 13 of some of the most well-known 13 of some of the most recognizable 13 of some of the most travel independent talents all under one roof but this ain't about them this is about me this is about me writing my story by making history by etching my name along with the czw mortals shane strickland eddie kingston jonathan gresham john mosley leo rush man but it all, it all starts with two. Alex, make no mistake, man. I am proud of you. I am proud of who you are, who you are to become. And me and you, man, we got business to discuss. And it starts with CZW. And to quote my man, Ron Bash Jr., I'm sorry it had to be you. But Aaron, I'm glad it is you, homie. Oh, I'm so glad it's you. Because see, I'm going to tell you what CZW won't. I'm going to tell you what everybody else is either too scared, too chicken shit to tell you. You ain't that guy. 
you were never that guy and you're never going to be that guy because if you were I wouldn't be talking to you but here I am all up in your universe all up in your universe coming to blow up your spot while coming to take your spot this is my destiny I've ignored it too many times and I will not ignore it again. My destiny will not be denied. My destiny will not be delayed. If I gotta go through CZW's biggest man, so be it. Yo, if I gotta crush MLW's crown jewel, so be it. But it has to go down like this, Alex. It just has to. Because if it wasn't for you, man, it'd just be somebody else. And while I'm proud of the person you are to become and I'm proud of the man you are, Man, you're gonna hate the person I gotta become. It's a shame, man. It really is. For as big as your shoulders are, man, they ain't ready for the pressure that be put on them. And as big, as loud as your traps are, man, they ain't ready for the world to be placed upon them things. Not at all. Cause see where I'm going, man, them lights, and they too bright for you. See where I'm going, that stage, man, that's way too big for you. That's outside your scope. So from one big man to another, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of advice that no one else is gonna give you. You ain't as good as you think you are. And you could be as big as you could be as bad as you want to. But underneath that, I know, you know, and I'm about to show everybody else. You saw the shit, boy. I can't count out Alex Kane or Aaron Ash. Aaron Ash, again, went to war with Griffin McCoy. Aaron Ash is not someone that knows what it feels like to lose. The last time he lost, it was to Griffin McCoy, and he was unconscious. So losing is not in the vocabulary of Aaron Ash. Alex Kane, on the other hand, continues to improve every time I've seen Alex Kane. Alex Kane is currently ranked number 86 in the PWI 500. He has beaten names like Davey Boy Smith Jr., A.C.H., Alex Shelley, and hey... Myron Reed. He also recently won a battle royal taking out O'Shea Edwards. So these two actually know each other very well. And if they're smart, they'll team up to take out the ruler Aaron Ash because I know Aaron Ash is going to be in a bad, bad mood after losing that strap match and is set to destroy anyone that stands in his way. Aaron Ash is not someone you want to make angry. CZW, best of the best tournament to crown his new CZW world champion. And your boy Alex Kane is in that tournament. Your boy Alex Kane is in that tournament because Alex Kane is one of the best of the best, not just in this tournament, but in this industry. O'Shea Edwards. One of the best of the best, not just in this tournament, but in this industry. I've even called him myself the total package. But there's one other name in this match that's got me a little confused. And that is you, Aaron Ash. Why are you in this tournament? Why are you in this match? What have you done to prove to the world, to this industry, that you are one of the best of the best, that you can even claim that mantle? Well, Aaron, I've proven myself. O'Shea's proven himself. Now it's time for you to prove yourself. Will you sink or will you swim? My prediction, because I plan on winning this match, is you are going to sink. O'Shea, you are going to sink. And that, that you too, that you too, victims, on Saturday, that is on Boomaye! 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 Ooh, this is not gonna be pretty when we get to best of the best. As a matter of fact, Aaron Ash had this to say. Language warning. Alex Kane, you want to respond so bad? You want somebody to pay attention to you so bad? Well, here it is. You know, before all this, I thought you were pretty smart, but then you decided to open your mouth and prove me wrong. Well, congratulations, because that doesn't happen often. Now, you want to question why Aaron Ash is in best of the best? You want to question why I deserve to be in this tournament? I rebuilt CZW from the ground up. Me. 
but you want to talk about what you've done everywhere else against whoever else. Well, you ain't done it in CZW, and you ain't done it against me. So as far as I'm concerned, what you've done don't mean jack shit. See, what you should have been concerned with is all the ways I'm about to beat the shit out of you. But you want to talk. You want to be on the internet, on Twitter, talking. Fine. Well, I told O'Shea this, so now you listen. May 20th, I'm taking my championship, and I'm taking CZW like it should have been from the beginning. Now, you call yourself the Suplex Assassin? Well, let's see what happens when you're in a 330 pounds of pissed off heavyweight, and I slap that dumbass mohawk sideways. Honestly, I can't believe that we have to lose two of these individuals in the first round. This is going to be a hard-hitting fight in the first round of best of the best. But based purely on anger, I'm going to have to go with Aaron Ash in the first round. And our final first round matchup is probably the most emotional match in the first round as Isaiah Wolf takes on the savage weight Fred Yeha and numero uno, Jaden Newman. Everyone's following the clout. They're not following the product because they're paying attention to what CZW is doing. Y'all know the American gangster Isaiah Wolf is a fucking pillar here, man. Month in, month out, I have shown everyone why I deserve to be in best of the best. Right now, honestly speaking, y'all might as well call me Mr. CZW because I have represented this brand to a T. Now I'm in best of the best and I, got, I ain't gonna lie. I'm mad excited about this, man. Cause I get to prove to everyone that's been sleeping on me, you too, social media, that Isaiah Wolf is not just a moniker of bringing big dick energy, but I show that. But I gotta get through Fred Yeha, someone that time and time again, I have beaten and battered. He has beaten and battered me, but yet I always come to be on top, man. But now I got Jaden Newman, man, and you don't know a thing about me. And that's shame on you, because I'm gonna knock your ass out. I'm gonna solidify myself as best in the world, because honestly speaking, I believe I'm best in the world, and y'all ass gonna see that too. But the moniker and the caveat is going to be a lot better. Because after I win that, what you're going to hear next is, and the new world champion, I, Isaiah Wolf. God damn, that sounds good. Does not that sound good? Big dick energy! Now, we know the history between Isaiah Wolf and Fred Yeha. These two have been trying to one-up each other for the better part of a year. Fred Yeha has been continuously attacking Ruthless Lala just to get under the skin of Isaiah Wolf. And this all came to a head at an afternoon of main events when they went one-on-one -on -one in a trial by combat. And I said many times that that match was no ropes, no rules, two men enter, one leaves broken. But it looks like I might have been wrong there, because I think both of these men were broken by that match. In the end, Isaiah Wolf won that match when Fred Yeha was unable to answer the 10 count. But Isaiah Wolf was back down on the mat when the count hit 11. Both of these men went through hell in a trial by combat. And now, the score has not been settled. These two are going to be locked on one another, wanting to show that they are the best of the best, not just to the world, but to that man standing across the ring. So what about Jaden Newman? You would think that Jaden Newman would be almost an afterthought in this blood feud between these two. But no, Jaden Newman's got a bone to pick as well. Let's hear from him. How are you going to talk about the best of the best and not add me into the equation? For those who don't already know, my name's Jaden Newman. And they call me El Numero Uno, Ichiban Number One and Numero Eins. I'm the worldwide sensation taking over the whole nation. And this Saturday, I'm showing up to Combat Zone Wrestling to enter the best of the best. And in the first round, I take on Isaiah Wolf and Fred Yehai. Isaiah, I ain't gonna lie, 
I'm a little bit unfamiliar, but you're in the tournament for a reason. And I'm looking forward to stepping in there to see what you got. But Fred Yehi, you and I got a little bit of history. Because the last time we faced off, I was a 17 year old kid. Now I'm a 24 year old man that's gonna be staring you in the face. Not only looking to earn your respect, but earn my way into the second round and then to the finals. Because I'll be damned if I don't walk out, solidifying my spot, not only as the best of the best, but as the CZW World Champion. For these three men, this first round is the most important match of their lives. Nobody wants to go home in that first round. But these three, they have something to prove to one another. So you know Isaiah Wolf hates Fred Yeha, and you know Jaden Newman hates Fred Yeha, so it would appear there's a big bullseye on Fred Yeha's chest. And that's why I'm picking Fred Yeha. Because if there's one thing about Fred Yeha that I noticed, he likes to control the center of the ring. He likes to be in control. He likes to pace himself. If he goes in there against two competitors that are fighting with emotion, a calm and collected Fred Yeha will win every time. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. This one, this one's personal. This one's going to hurt. But I think just barely it's going to be Fred Yeha moving on. So now we have the semifinals almost set. According to my predictions, we will see Aaron Ash versus Kid Bandit on one side of the bracket, and on the other we will see Griffin McCoy versus Fred Yeha. But there's one thing we have to consider, and that's the man who earned a bye into the semifinals, one half of CMD and the world tag team champions, a man that truly believes he runs this... I'm talking about Deshaun Pratt. And I'm gonna say this, a fresh Deshaun Pratt is a dangerous Deshaun Pratt. As a matter of fact, regardless of what match he's added to, I'm saying he wins it. Either match that Deshaun Pratt is added to, he will move on to the finals. So let's break it down. Let's say Deshaun Pratt is added to Kid Bandit and Aaron Ash. Deshaun Pratt wins that match and moves to the finals. That leaves Griffin McCoy versus Fred Yeha. Did you know Griffin McCoy has never beaten Fred Yeha? He's tried many times, but he could never get the job done. And I'm going to say that that fact remains true until best of the best. I believe that Griffin McCoy will defeat Fred Yeha and move on to the finals and face Deshaun Pratt. And you know what? Griffin McCoy believes that he is the top guy. And top guys do top guy things. I believe Griffin McCoy will come out victorious and hold the CZW Championship. Why is that? Is it because I picked Griffin McCoy to win best of the best in the far too big year long you pick him? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. But also, Griffin McCoy has been training his entire life for this moment. There are many wrestlers that dream about one day main eventing WrestleMania. Not Griffin McCoy. Griffin McCoy dreamed of being the best of the best. This is his tournament to win. And I believe Griffin McCoy will walk out with the gold. If Deshaun Pratt is added to the other match. Let's flip the script. If Aaron Ash takes on Kid Bandit one-on-one, -on -one, it's really hard to defeat Aaron Ash one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm going to say Aaron Ash beats Kid Bandit and moves on to the finals. On the other side of things, I know Griffin and Fred Yeha are going to immediately be at loggerheads. And I think a crafty Deshaun Pratt, who hasn't had to wrestle yet, will take advantage of that 
and will move on to the finals to face Aaron Ash. Aaron Ash believes that that title's already his. And I think that could lead to Aaron Ash underestimating Deshaun Pratt. Deshaun Pratt already has gold. He also has a good friend in Boom Harden that would help him achieve anything that he wants. I think in the finals, if it's Aaron Ash and Deshaun Pratt, Deshaun Pratt holds two titles and becomes the CZW World Heavyweight Champion. But that's just my predictions. I don't know what's going to happen at Best of the Best, but I sure am excited for it. So please, let me know what your brackets are in the comments down below. And please, join us in Havana Grace, Maryland on May 20th for Best of the Best. And if you can't be there live, watch live on the premiere Network. It is going to be an unforgettable night of wrestling. And thank you so much for joining me for Bracketology. If you could be so kind, please subscribe right here to Plus Two Wrestling. We recently crested a hundred subscribers. So thank you to everyone out there who has subscribed to the channel. And I hope you have a great day.